Hey guys, Alex here. Bad hair day, so I got the hat on. And uh, just wanted to let you guys know there's a link down below. Uh, some of you have reached out to me asking to audit your site or just some questions about SEO. There's a link below that you can book a call, a uh, 50 minute free audit if you're interested or just if you have any questions about uh, ChatGPT or SEO. Anyways, in today's video, we're gonna jump into why your ChatGPT posts aren't ranking and how to fix it. Uh, so it should be pretty quick, but yeah. So jumping right into it, I don't recommend that auto blogging at all. I've tried it, it's a lot of work uh, and most of those sites are gonna be monetized with display ads and your efforts are, are better spent uh, in a lot of other places, right? I think if you want quality content from ChatGPT, from Google Bard, you need to work on it. So I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be tons of examples of people that are lo uploading you know, thousands of posts that are making money, fine. That's probably not gonna be you, uh, unfortunately. And you're just not doing yourself any favors. You're not doing the internet any favors by creating that kind of content on scale. Now you can create super helpful content, super useful content using ChatGPT, using Bard, using AI, uh, relatively quick, way faster than you could before, and content that actually ranks. And let me show you what I mean by uh, why your content isn't gonna rank. So if you look at enough posts and if you write enough posts using ChatGPT, you'll see that it has a lot of, uh, it uses a lot of the same phrasing. In this blog post, we'll delve into da 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 da. It uses a lot of words like furthermore or moreover, things that you just won't use normally uh, in day-to-day -day life. And it's pretty easy to find content that's using that. So I just searched for in this blog post, we'll delve. And I have a few examples of exactly what kind of ChatGPT gives you. I have no idea what this site does, but this is kind of like the classic ChatGPT format right, a few headings, all content, huge blocks of content nobody wants to read, no external links, right, and then again, it has the, in this blog post, we'll delve somewhere uh, in this, uh, yeah, so as their intro, right, but this provides no value to anybody. It's hard to read, these kind of these kind of subheadings are cool, but still, not great. Another one from Medium, uh, and this is just, this is like the super basic 3. ChatGPT 3.5, uh, they didn't even add the headings, ChatGPT just gives out a few headings they copied and pasted right into Medium. Uh, and it does rank for if, if you search for in this blog post, we'll delve. Uh, but otherwise, terrible content, not helpful. You can't expect this to rank or drive traffic or generate a lead or anything. Again, I'm sure people are. That's fine. I'm not arguing that it doesn't work. But if you want to actually create a helpful site uh, or promote a service or generate leads, you're going to have to do better, right? Uh, and now one of these is a, uh, this one's a little bit of a better example. But even some of this content, right? I mean, guys, there's no links. These photos are super tiny. Nobody went back and reviewed this kind of content, right? And there's another one, birds will start. Birds will start with J. There's no external links. Uh, this one doesn't have any headings. It's just it's just bad content, right, guys? And now this post, fully chat GPT. It's slightly better, but again, there's doesn't there's not really enough images. This, this chat GPT does all the time, and it does have a little bit of an intro here, but there's no links, there's no images, there's there's nothing that's really helpful besides the content. And even that content is just blocky, it's difficult to read. And you just really wanna avoid this, right? Uh, and here's my site, I've just started working on it. Uh, again, it's fully ChatGPT. I'm just noticing now that it's not centered on the page. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Uh, but anyways, you can see that we do the table of contents, which you can click into uh, a heading, some bolded text, photo, right? We've got some, um, uh, internal links. Uh, we do have the classic chart, uh, and then here's the will delve, right? Uh, but again, we've got internal links. It's broken up. We've got explainer sections. We got photos. Uh, so you know, it just does. It just just putting a little bit of effort in to make it easier to read. And again, this one isn't perfect, uh, but this is a, a far better than the other posts. It's very detailed, uh, and it wasn't just a, a one click and done uh, article in ChatGPT, right? There's, it's, it is pretty helpful if you're looking for that. There is external links, internal links, super helpful information, and it does rank and will continue to rank uh, better. But yeah, here's what you wanna be doing uh, on ChatGPT and Google Bard if you wanna actually create helpful content that's decent enough and can compete. Um, so I like Google Bard for outlines, and I just did a video about it if you wanna check it out. You just say write an outline, right? Write a blog post outline about, uh, and then we have a topic. Let's say you are, I don't know, selling cars in uh, in New Hampshire. So about the best used cars under $5,000, right? So if you had a used car dealership, just as an example, it's probably the worst example. 
Uh, and this is what I love about Google, Google Bard, by the way. It gives you these really specific examples. But what, would you, what, you, what you would want to do uh, is create a super helpful post based on that. And now this isn't fantastic, right? So it just has the intro, section one. Uh, if you know the niche, you can also have a thing. You would also have a post like things to look for uh, when you're buying a used car. But again, for a, just a super quick outline, that's fine. What you then want to do is open your, uh, is open your um, whatever you're editing. So WordPress or whatever. I'll just do it in Google Docs, for example. And you just take this outline. You can use ChatGPT for the outline as well. Uh, you just take this outline and then you just paste it into here. I don't know what the formatting is straight from Google Bard. I don't like that. Uh, this is not going to be fine, but whatever. So basically what you can do now, uh, now you have the outline, is take this section and then you go to ChatGPT and then you say, write me an introduction for my blog post based on my blog post about the cheapest or best used cars under $5,000. Then you can just add that context there. Now it's going to give you an introduction. And then while it's writing, uh, you can quickly review the introduction. Uh, and I mean, already guys, that's, that's pretty good. It's probably going to go with the, in this blog post we'll delve into, uh, but it's starting out pretty strong. Yeah, there you go. So I recommend changing this. I do like to change it on the blog posts and then you're going to paste that into here, into the introduction and just let it finish for a second. What you want to do is go through section by section. Uh, and then while it's writing or while you paste it in, just quickly scan and review the content. Now this is not something you can personally want to scale. But the quality of content you're going to get by doing this is going to be much higher, uh, and it has a much more uh, has a much higher likelihood to rank on Google, right? So you just paste this in, paste without formatting, and then now you would just take this, right? You would say um, elaborate on each of the following sections. Uh, use a heading for each car with enough details for people to make an informed decision. Boom. Now in theory, it should add, uh, yeah, there we go. Now when this is done, you would paste that back in the doc. And look at that, firstly, so it's really gonna dive into this. Normally with ChatGPT, with a lot of the automated output, it'll have one or two sentences and you're gonna have like a 600 word article that's just simply not gonna be helpful uh, for anybody. But if you look at this, this is just for the OA Corolla. Right now it's jumping into the 07 Accord. Uh, so it's creating a lot of helpful content that somebody looking for the best used car under 5,000 is actually gonna find helpful and useful. Uh, and if you're selling, if you're a used car dealership, this is something you, pr you can promote. Now I know you can use custom GPTs. Uh, I know you can use Google Playground to get those one click um, blog posts, uh, which are fine. Again, I know they work. I use them myself. I know it works, but for the highest quality content, you really want to be doing it manually uh, or having somebody on your team doing it manually so that they can go through, kind of set, kind of verify the information to make sure what you're writing makes sense, to make sure that there's, there's enough content. And now when you paste this into a blog post, for example, you're going to have a few paragraphs worth of information for each cars, uh, for each of these cars, right? And this looks a lot better than just like a tiny headline uh, and then one or two sentences about each. And it, it is actually providing uh, value for that reader. And so yeah, that's how I recommend doing going through uh, making content. Try to do it as manually as possible, especially for your big money sites, for sites that matter. There's no way around it, guys. Automation is going to work, but it's not going to work on the scale that you want. And especially if you're using it for your business or something that matters uh, that you want to focus on building in the long term, whether it's a brand or service, you want to be doing this manually just because it's going to help your readers. It's going to help your site. Uh, it's going to make you come across as more legit. And you are going to learn a little bit more about your niche, about your business while you are going through this content. Uh, so you still save time, but your the end result is a much higher quality post. Um, and feel free to argue argue with me, you guys. Uh, I'm open to discussing it in the comments. As always, uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.